Now, we're going to run through some examples. I will bet that several of these examples, everyone in the room has seen before. You probably did this in high school. You probably have done it in other math classes here at Georgia Tech. But we're going to redo it anyway. So our first example is going to be to show that the sum of the first n odd integers is n squared. So formally, we would write that statement as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot, 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 out 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So this is a statement, an Sn. It's a statement that has bed, embedded in it a value n where n is a positive integer. If we're going to prove that this is true for all n, we have to do two things. First, we have to verify that it's true when n is 1. And I do that first. So take the left-hand side. When n is 1, there's no real sum. There's just writing down the first term. And the first term is 1. So 2 times 1 minus 1, the first odd integer is just 1. And that's 1 squared. So the formula is true when n is 1. So the second part is to assume that it's true for some integer k. So I write assume true when n equals k. I don't specify what k is. k is any positive integer. So in other words, I'm assuming that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 up to some value 2k minus 1 is k squared. Now let me pause right there and say when, when students are first introduced to the principle of induction, they do not understand the difference between that line and the first line of the problem. And here's the difference. The first statement is a statement for all n. This, this line that we have just written is a statement for a particular value of k. That's quite different. This is a special case. The other is a general statement. All right, so now we assume that that's true. And now what we try to do is prove the validity of the statement for the next positive integer when n is k plus 1. All right, so what I do is I write the two sides down again, and this time I add 2k plus 1 to both sides. Why did I do that? Why didn't I add 17? Or 40, 42 is my favorite number. Why didn't I add 42? Well, I could have, and it would have been mathematically correct, but it wouldn't have accomplished anything. I added 2k plus 1 to both sides so that the updated left-hand side is the left-hand side of the formula when n is k plus 1. Is that clear? That's why that term is there? All right, now I just do some algebra on the right-hand side. k squared plus 2k plus 1. Clear the parentheses is k squared plus 2k plus 1. And that's obviously the quantity k plus 1 squared. And that's exactly what I had to do. Because that's the right-hand side of the formula when n is k plus 1. And on the left hand, I have the left-hand side of the formula when n is k plus 1. So QED, end of proof. That's all that I needed to do. I could have embellished this by writing, therefore, by the principle of math induction. OK, but let's just skip that and just say, I've done the two things I had to do. The proof is complete. Question. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing you. Are, you. are you supposed to write QED for like this? You can write a box. You can write QED. You can write done, D-O-N-E. Anything that signals clearly that you believe that you have completed the argument. QED is short. OK. Now, we've commented before about the idea of ambiguity and the use of dot, dot, dots. So let's go back to this and say, can we really be certain that we know what, it, what we mean when we say the sum of the first n integers is n squared? And we write this stuff with the dot, dot, dot sign. And if we go back to the comments that we were making a lecture or two ago, uh, dot, dot, dots can be dangerous. It's a little bit more clear. If we put in the expression, it's the sum of the first n odd integers, that 
pretty much clears it up. But here's a way that we can be even more precise, and that is to use the formal notation of the Greek letter capital Sigma. Now, probably all of you have used capital Sigma before. You use it in calculus class when you're talking about infinite series. So for a finite sequence, you define the sigma operation, and now this is a statement where you're using induction. So sigma from i equals 1 to 1 of a sequence ai is just the first term. Now you know what it means when the upper term is 1. And now sigma from i equals 1 to k plus 1 of ai is the k plus first term added to the definition for i equals 1 to k. And by the principle of induction, you have now defined the sigma notation for every positive integer n and for every sequence. All right, so if we want to use the sigma notation on that first slide, this is the way we would write it. The statement would be sigma i equals 1 to n of 2i minus 1 would be n squared. Now, there's absolutely no ambiguity as to what that means. And look how short the proof is. The proof, we first verify that it's correct when, I is, when, in, when, when the n is 1. So sigma i equals 1 to 1 of 2i minus 1 is just that first term, 2 times 1 minus 1. That's 1, and that's 1 squared. Check. Part 1 is done. And probably I should write, therefore we have demonstrated validity when n is 1, but I'm skipping all that part, just saying everybody knows what we need to do. The two things, we have to show that it's true when n is 1, and we have to assume that it's true when n is k, and show that it follows from that that it's true when n is k plus 1. And under the sentence that begins, now assume, that is the statement of validity when n is k. And then what do I do? I take that statement, and I add the next term. Well, the next term is the previous statement plus the next term. That's k squared plus twice k plus 1 minus 1. And now clearing with algebra, I get k plus 1 squared. Done. So the, the proof is exactly the same, uh, taking out the dot, dot, dots, and taking out the English words. But the mathematics is the same. OK, now, theory versus practice. In practice, almost everybody in the three fields, math, computer science, engineering, and other fields who, who work with things like this, prefer the informal notation with the dot, dot, dots. They, they know there's a potential ambiguity, but it's, it's, it says more to them when they see it. The sigma hides things and makes it a little abstract. And, and so in most cases, despite the potential pitfalls, people prefer the informal notation because they can feel it in here. And usually, combinatorial proofs that explain things in concrete terms are better than formal proofs that require just a proof by induction. But I put at the bottom of this slide, remember, usually means usually and not always. Because there are simple things that can be proved by induction. And then you can prove them combinatorially, but now it gets like this. And you lose things along the way. And we will see some examples later in the course. So it's best for you to be comfortable with both methods. So when you're required to be Gauss and add up the numbers from 1 to 100, remember that you can do it this way. And you can get a, a very quick answer quickly. That's a combinatorial proof. But if you're required, be comfortable with providing a proof, just a formal proof. Forget the background, the explanation. Just do it. <laughs>